Okay. All right. So in today's lecture, we're going to be discussing leadership styles and shared governance as it relates to nursing. So there are various type of leadership styles. We have the transformational leadership. We have transactional. We have democratic. We have laissez faire, and we have autocratic. Right, and we're going to go over them one by one. So with transformational leadership, transformational leadership is uh, leaders that inspires and motivate their team members to achieve their full potential and exceed expectation. So is that nurse manager or nurse leader that motivate the nurses? So they focus, is, they focus on fostering a vision and encourage creativity and innovation. So a nurse may come up with an idea on the unit. So you as a new nurse may come up with an idea on the unit and you think that it's a great idea and you want to share it with your leader instead of shutting you down. Then if it's feasible and it's in line with the organization of mission and vision, then this transformational leader will inspire and motivate you. So what are the characteristics of transformational leadership? They, they're inspirational, they're motivating, they're intellectually stimulating, and individualized considerations are key traits. So they don't use like a cookie cutter and put everyone in one basket. They actually individualize the person needs that they are tending to or that nurse that they're tending to, all right? So in nursing, transformational leaders create a supportive work environment and also inspire quality improvement initiative. So the goal is here is that a transformational leader is inspiring, they're motivating, they're stimulating, intellectually stimulating, and they considered each individual, um, each person individually. So here's an example of a transformational leader. Vision articulation. A nurse leader presents a new patient-centered care model to the nursing team and clearly outline the goals and the benefit. So this nurse leader will come to you and say, hey, listen, guys, uh, we have an idea about uh, implementing a new model that will benefit our patient. So this actually get the nursing team involved and engaged. The leader facilitate discussion. A lot of times when you work into a facility, whatever they say or whatever comes from leadership is implemented without the nurse's input. So the leader facilitate discussion and seek input from all the team members and encourage innovative ideas and solution. When it comes down to the implementation aspect of it, with the team buy-in, because the nurses, and you as a new nurse or the nurse on the unit, because the leader come to you, you're able to give your input, the nurse leader, the transformational leader get a, or get buy-in from the patient or from the nurses, and the leader then guides the implementation of the new model, providing support and mentorship throughout the process. All right. So uh, in a nutshell, a transformational leader motivates, um, is receptive to innovative ideas, guide, mentor. All right. Transactional leadership in nursing. The word says it, transactional. You give me something and I give you something. So transactional leadership focus on structure, supervision, performance, and they use reward or punishment to motivate the staff to maintain a day-to-day -day operation. Sometimes, say for example, you're a nurse working in the U on the unit, right? And the staff or the leadership Say, okay, um, you guys will give anybody a free, let me tell you, transactional. In the last election, and I'm sorry I'm jumping, but this is a perfect. Elon Musk, 
was giving somebody how many two million dollar check if they take someone to go vote. I don't know if you remember that. Did you hear yes. that in the election? That's yeah. transactional. You do this and I pay you because you don't need to pay people to go vote. Um, so that's transactional. So on the on the unit, they'll say, okay, for everyone who may come early on Monday, we'll give everyone a $25 gift card. But the opposite is true too, that if you do something wrong, then you'll be punished versus being mentored or coached. So transactional leadership is that you do this, you have to get punished or reward depending on the action. But it seems like transactional leadership is more common in a lot of settings. Yes. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Okay, to motivate. Okay, we're going to give you lunch. You guys come to the uh, meeting. There's going to be lunch served. We're going to have coffee. We're going to give away prizes. And, you know, if you guys do this, yes. At the end, I'm going to tell you something about all these leadership stuff because sometimes you have a leader who may utilize multiple styles, um, but you have one that's dominant. But anyway, let me talk about characteristic. They have clear expectation. Their leadership is contingent upon reward and corrective actions are key element of transactional leadership. So how do they apply this? This style is effective in emergency situations. So that's why I say you can have a you can have a transformational leader uh, that may sometimes use a transactional um, style, but their dominant style is transformational leadership. All right. So this style is effective in emergency situation or when a strict adherence to protocol is necessary, ensuring patient safety and policy and compliance with policy. So sometimes it's not all the time, because sometimes you will have a, a rule come down to say, okay, all nurses need to start taking um, the blood or withdraw the blood this way, or start taking blood culture in a certain way. And it's come up, come down from leadership and there's no go around it. There's no negotiating it. This is what they say needs to be done and it needs to be done this way. So transactional leadership, all oh, for everyone who collect their blood early, um, correctly this week, will they get pizza? All right, something like that. So let's look at, let me go back. So let's look at an example. Nurse manager, Strictly enforce medication administration protocol to maintain patient safety standard. Nothing is wrong with that. Um, because when you're so this nurse manager wanting to um enforce medication administration protocol to make sure the patients are safe is a good thing. However, this manager may conduct regular performance evaluation to provide feedback and to ensure adherence to the established guidelines. In addition to that, she may implement a reward system for nurses who constantly meet or exceed the performance. And at the huddle, she may say, um, okay, today, this week, Tommy had the highest adherence to the administration protocol and we're gonna give a 25 dollars gift card, all right? And again, not you may have a leader who lead with this predominant trait but may also have uh, exhibited other leadership style traits um, within them, all right? Democratic. Uh, when you hear democratic, what should come in mind is based on the political democratic party, they're for the people. So that is the main theme for democratic leadership in nursing. In terms of democratic leadership in nursing, they believe in open communication. Leaders encourage teams to discuss and input from all members. Uh, they, they also seek a consensus and input from staff on important decisions that take place. Like, hey, guys, I, I don't know if you know this, but in most workplaces, they will vote on a, oh, guys, we need a, a, a suggestion box. What do you guys think? Or if they want something new, like a fridge or something that, but the democratic leader get the input from the staff, right? Okay. In terms of when it comes on to the democratic leader and their style, the leader promote teamwork and collective problem-solving approach. 
whenever giving suggestion or whenever in an environment where teamwork and collaborative, a lot of times there's brainstorming. So people are going to throw ideas out and all ideas should be looked at, evaluated, and then the team come up with which one is the best. So that's a democratic leadership. If you remember Democrat, they think they're for the people or they say they're for the people, but democratic leadership style is the same thing. They are for the people. They get the people involved, such as um, the nurses, involved in problem-solving skills. So here's an example of a democratic leadership style apply. Application. The democratic leader empowers nurses by including them in decisions that affect their work environment and patient care. This approach leads to increased job satisfaction and a sense of ownership among nurses or nursing staff, and it fosters a collaborative atmosphere where nurses feel valued and heard. An example of a democratic leadership is action in action is a unit manager organizing monthly staff meeting to discuss unit challenges and collaborative development solutions. So this practice ensure that all team members have a voice in shaping their work environment. Laser fair leadership. So laser fair leadership provide um, minimal direction and also allow the team to make decisions and manage their work. I have a good question for this one with you guys. So laser fair is like, okay, whatever you want to do, that's fine. So they give the nurse more autonomy, more hands off approach, and they have limited interventions. Um, that's one of the key thing with the laser fair leadership style as a nurse you are also a leader of the patient care. A uh, laser fair approach cannot be used all the time because then everybody's going to do what they want to do. And if you're having a problem, because uh, how many times you've seen questions that says, what should the nurse do first? Report to the manager, talk to the nurse leader, go see the supervisor. Like if you see someone is having, dr um, someone is taking drugs, or you you have the notion that one of the nurse on the unit is taking drugs, what should the nurse do first? And that's, that's talk to the nurse manager. A nurse manager whose leadership style is predominantly laser fair, then will not be able to handle you going to report that. So that's why I mentioned earlier on that most nursing leader leaders have multiple, they have one dominant style and they may use traits of others during, during certain situations. So for the laser fair, this style can be effective in a highly specialized team, such as um, research nursing, where nurses are self-directed or experienced. A laser fair approach is not necessarily a bad thing, but if it's the only style that a person is using, then it will not be effective, all right? Clearing that one. So let's look at this example. Project assignments. A nurse leader assign a clinical trial project to experienced research nurse. And it just is the same example as I said earlier on. A teamwork autonomously managing their task and time without any direct supervision. Um, periodically check in. The leader provide oversight only as needed, trusting the team expertise. So let me ask you something. Do you think this leadership style would be beneficial for a new nurse? No. 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 You need um, an experienced nurse who knows what they're doing because a, a new nurse needs a lot of supervision and a lot of help, especially during the first couple of years on the floor. So a laser fair style will not work. I guess. All right. Any question about this? Autocratic. Um, autocratic leadership style. It, this reminds me of the Republicans. Mm -hmm. They make decisions. Mm -hmm. and, 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 mm -hmm. I say, and, and I say Republicans because they're Democratic leadership style. So if you should say, if you should compare both uh, in terms of they're so, they're opposite from each other, 
is the autocratic and the democratic, right? So they make decisions without input from staff and expect compliance. They emphasize authority and control. This leadership style is also called authoritarian leadership style. It's called, called autocratic or authoritarian leadership style because they emphasize con um, authority and control. So they have a directive approach, structured environment and clear expectation are the hallmark sign for an autocratic leader, a auto autocratic leader or authoritarian leader. So the, even though this sound like they're so rigid, this is what we're gonna do, you're gonna follow it and da 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 da. The truth is that sometimes this kind of style is needed in certain situations. Mm -hmm. You can't have a hands-off approach all the time. You can't say, okay, let me hear what your thoughts are, because then sometimes people or staff will run over you. And let's use our children, for example. You know if you give your children a, a, a yard that take a mile. So if you should have a hands-off approach all the time with your kids, it's okay, do what you want. You want to play games? Fine. You want to eat and drink soda? Fine. And have this hands-off approach with your time when you have to put your hand down and say, no, you need to go to bed now. No, you need to do this now or stop doing that. So a autocratic leadership style is needed sometimes. So it's necessarily in crisis such as mass casualty event where quick decision making and clear directions are very critical. Now, during a mass casualty, you don't have time to say, what do you guys want to do? Do you want to take the blood pressure? Do you want to take temperature? No, you're like, you do that. You do that. So a autocratic leadership style is not always a bad thing. You guys get what I'm saying? Yeah, you do need structure sometimes and and services. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So an example, an emergency situation, a hospital-wide emergency occur require immediate action. So a decisive leadership, the charge nurse take control issuing clear directives without seeking input. That's basically what it is. And you do that too sometimes um, outside of nursing. It's the same thing here, especially during a disaster you, uh, or during COVID time. When, when the nurses come in and everybody has to have their mask on, you're not saying, would you like to wear your mask or you don't want to? Or they didn't say, do you want to take the vaccine or you don't want to? They're like, you need to take the vaccine else you can't come to work. That's an autocratic leadership style. Or in you know, another name for it, as I mentioned, is the authoritarian leadership style. So staff compliance, nursing staff follow instruction precisely ensure an efficient emergency response. Shared governance. Now, have you ever heard of shared governance before? But let me tell you a little bit about shared governance. It says it, shared in governing. And I know a lot of times we don't feel like leadership share the governance with us. So shared governance is a model that empowers nurses to contribute to decision-making process, right? And you talk about the democratic, that impact their work and patient outcome. It fosters collaboration, accountability and professional growth within the nursing profession. So in here, when say that they're going to have nurses work with the leadership to improve the outcome of the process, and it also kind of keep them accountable. Nurses are responsible for the quality of their practice and the decision-making. That's what shared governance is, all right? They share the governance. So implementation of a shared governance. In shared governance, they have a lot of committee. So nurse leader encourage staff to join committees that influence hospital policy. And ladies, especially this, the committee part, I mean, all of what I'm telling you, you need to know, but um, this part, how can a nurse shows that 
she's participating in the sheer governance aspect is because she joined a committee, a committee that's important to her. Now, what kind, of, what kind of committee do you think they have in the hospital setting or the healthcare setting? A committee can be an ambulatory care committee. It could be a research-based committee. It could be a nursing initiative committee. So having these small committees give nurses an opportunity to actually um, influence policy, what policy is written, how the policy is written. So all of these committee, and there was working at um, Sylvester, they had a infectious, infection disease committee that actually work on policies as it relates to infectious disease, talk about you know, how many um, cardi there was, how many, uh, what is the age cap score as it relates to infection, how many, you know, port was infected or not, and what was the root cause analysis. So these committee, uh, the leaders then will encourage you, sometimes I have to tell you, they'll force you to say, okay, join one. Because especially if an organization is going to get magnets, they need to have this committee. When the nurse participate in committees, this shows you that the nurse is engaged, the nurse cares about the organization, and that she's participating in shared governance. All right? Quality improvement. Nurses are involved in identifying and implementing quality improvement initiative. Benefit. Why shared governance? It does a couple of things. Um, nurses feel valued and heard, leading to higher job satisfaction and retention. Retention has to do a lot with magnets. It also um, improves patient outcomes, which is very good. Collaborative decision-making leads to implementation of evidence-based practice and better patient outcome. Now, the reason why uh, there is a improved patient outcome, because you're saying the things that they're doing in the clinic or the hospital is based on evidence. Remember we said we go into the literature search, what can reduce nausea and the photo of that ginger? It's the same thing. You notice that your patient is not making their appointment. They're missing their appointment. You go in the literature search, what worked? What can I do to improve um, patient making their appointments? So that's why evidence-based works by um, improving um, patient outcome. In addition to increased job satisfaction, improved patient outcome, there's also the professional development. Nurses develop leadership skills and have opportunities for career advancement within the organization. That's what shared governance um, does. Shared governance is tied mainly to two kinds of leadership style. It's tied to transformational leadership uh, because transformational leaders articulate a clear vision that aligns with shared governance principle. Um, as, as I mentioned, that transformational leader, leaders are innovative. They encourage, they inspire other nurses. And when it comes on also to personal growth, transformational leaders support individual nursing development within the organization. For democratic, we, you spoke about that, Sita, that they have an open communication. They foster open dialogue. They, um, they're on the collective decision-making. So democratic leadership style do work with shared governance. The one that does not, the transactional a little but not too fully, the one that does not is the autocratic. This does not align with shared governance. Do this, do that, do this, do that. It doesn't. If you're on a test, and it asks you about shared governance, the one that fits shared governance, the most transformational leadership style, all right? Any question about that? 